Uh, okay. It is Sunday night, um, January 21st already, 2024, class three. And uh, so we're starting our recording. Brian is recording. I guess oh, somebody else is recording. Um, that threw me off a little bit. I haven't seen that before. <clears throat> so welcome, everybody. Thanks for uh, being here. So get your little, um, we're going to move through it pretty quick. We have a guest um, speaker. From, we brought in special for your this class. The class of the only ones that get it. So just realize how lucky you are. So bring up your uh, little score sheets. Oh, did you lucky? Or your little score sheets right here. We're going to do one really quick because um, your homework was to do two of these guys, but I, I'd like to uh, do extra ones because I think it takes a while for everybody to kind of figure it out. Um, at least it took me a while, so I just assume everybody's as slow as I am. So if you have your little score sheet there, um, we're going to take a look. I'm going to, apparently we lose focus a little bit when I scroll too fast. And so um, if you take a look there uh, on on the first, um, the first row we have on our score sheet, the 990 analysis sheet, our favorite friend, is um, we want to know um, what the service, program service revenue is. So we look at line nine. You can all see there, I hopefully you can see it's highlighted in yellow. And um, so we take line nine and we divide it by line 12. I, um, Kim, is that what you have on your sheet also? I, I, I goofed on this one time. Yes, but I think yes, I think I have the order right. You so do. If, somebody, you do. if somebody out there in um, Zoom land can give me that um, answer and how many points uh, we would give here, um, I don't know if I can see the chat or not. Um, I think I can. Where is the chat? Oh, there it is. Um, why don't you put it in the chat for me? It says Rich. Okay, she's not in this meeting. So, so anyway, um, go ahead and put it in the chat for me. I don't see any chats yet. So I'm assuming that um, you're busy calculating it. And maybe you have. Serena well, has it. Serena, how many points? There we go. You got to tell me how many points, or you got to put that in the chat. Three points, she says. Three points. All right, sweet. Erica so, agrees. Well, then it's really true. If we, Erica agrees, then it's for sure true. She's our fact checker. <laughs> so we're going to skip down. Hopefully, I won't lose you here. Uh, we're going to skip down to another section here. I wanted to highlight just a little bit. Keem talked about it last week, and it's not on our score sheet, but it's the second page down, and it's these sections here. We don't really score them on our score sheets, but we were taking a look at costs per unit. And sometimes when you're comparing different uh, nonprofits, it helps you understand, especially if um, they're kind of the same, it maybe tells you who's a little more effective in doing different things. So you can see this is a, a, a mission in Orange County and they did uh, 760,000 meals and they did a bunch of clothing. So you can see all kinds of units here. And uh, so this part here, is, th this section here is helpful, um, I think in helping you understand uh, really if they're being effective or not effective. So they have real high numbers. Uh, at least, I mean, low cost per thousand on a lot of items and probably other missions would be somewhat similar or you could at least tell the difference between the two of them. Maybe a rehab place might have really not, you know, cost per thousand might be really high because of the intensity and the amount of human support that people need. But anyway, I just wanted to bring that to your attention. And uh, let's go down now to the second one is page seven and eight. And um, Kim, we're still clear, right? On You're this? good. So yeah. hopefully, uh, maybe there's a page down thing here somewhere. I just don't, oh, yeah, there it is. I don't know if page down would do. 
be a little kinder on this. That's not page down, though. Let's just scroll down. Sometimes if you just do the arrow on your keyboard, it'll do it, too. I think it's I, right we see page nine now. Okay, so it's we're looking for um, seven and eight, right? Yeah. Went too far. So here's the compensation of the the, the highest compensated um, people. So who wants to put in the chat? Uh, let me show you what we got going here. So we got number one is Mr. Palmer at three four three hundred forty one thousand, and then there's a couple down here, and um, so this one might be kind of close. Um, so you guys can see what the criteria is for points, and. Um, so go ahead and put in the chat there what um and Dan, what we're only seeing through number nine. There you go. Now it jumped down, but now it's blurry. Oh, it did jump down. Okay, sorry about that. Um we can't read the numbers though, it is blurry. So okay, so yeah. let's reshare. So there's not a really great way to share PDFs, apparently. <laughs> These things. Um we learn as we go. Okay, so hopefully you can see it now. You can see number 10. Um, there's a bunch of zeros there that, on the directors, basically. But you can see four more people. So if you can see that clearly in the chat, um, why don't you put how many uh, points we would give us? For me, it's still blurry. Anyone else still seeing it blurry? I don't know. Anybody is it clear to anybody? It's clear for us. It is okay. Cool. I see it clearly. Okay, so we should be seeing some numbers in the chat there. I don't see any numbers yet, and so I need you guys to put the numbers in there. And thanks for putting it in the chat that it's clear. So it might be Kim's. Actually, Kim's could be her internet too. We had a class last week that the internet uh, put the teacher shut down. So we're always okay. Somebody has one point, and um, anybody else? Gavin says one point. Erica says one person, so three points. Okay. I think it's actually three people. Um, Art, can you go to the next page? Because isn't there sometimes more people on the next page? Yeah, but um, on the top part here of this page, we had one already, 341. Yeah. 341, 202, and 173. So that's three. Okay, well. So one point is correct. Does that make sense? Now, um, oh sometimes, yeah. Sometimes when it gets this close, you can, you know, you might take into consideration it's pretty close on the third one, and um, sometimes you can bump them up maybe, or you can talk whoever's you know trying to take care of your grant that it's not too bad. Now I wanted to look and show this to you really quickly, and we're running out of time quickly. This is an area here where um, people can hide compensation and there's enough bad NGOs and, and nonprofits out there. You really got to watch what's going on these days. Um, a, part, a lot of problems in our country are because of our border and there's NGOs all over the place down there. And um, we haven't looked at any of their, um, their uh, tax returns, but they're out there. Um, but but people can hide compensation in the contractor section. We I don't think the I know who these guys are as this nonprofit, so I trust them. But I just wanted you to be aware there's ways to hide compensation. So let's go down to what we'll do is I think we'll do just one more one more section so that way we can start with Jeff. And um, this is page 10 and the, the, the item we're looking for, actually I skipped page nine, so we're gonna go to the fourth um, 
row down, page 10. Statement of functional expenses, you divide line 1B by 25. So there's line 1B. I put the box in there. It's actually, it's, it's zero. And then 25 is down here. And because I spent some time putting this together, uh, we have 25B. So who can tell me what the, the scoring would be on the statement of functional expenses? How many points? And somebody brought a, a good point. It says two to three people is on the on the compensation. It, two to three people, and I think we had four. Um, if we didn't, if we didn't have four, then it was two. If we had four, it was it was one. Anyway, um, anybody know how many points we give on this one? This one should be easy. One B by twenty five B three. Okay, that's correct because it's zero. It's so it's because it's zero. That's um, that's easy enough to do. On the bottom there, you can see on on the very last on your on your form, we look at the management, which is is box C, and we look at um, fundraising, which is box D down there, and so. Um, Quickly, um, maybe you guys can score those for me. What what would it be on the one, two, three, the one, two, three, four, the fifth row down, what would our score be? Anybody anybody have that? You take um, C and divide it by A, and that should give you the percent, the decimal that you're looking for. Anybody got that? Somebody said 0 0.07. How many points is that on our score sheet? That's three, that's correct. And then um, the last one is, um, it's not gonna be three because it's a bigger number than 10%. Um, so anyway, so that's a little bit of work on um, just another nonprofit. So I wanna encourage you to keep doing these. Um, and I, I saw most everybody did their homework like he asked us to do. And uh, so it's it, it just take your take your time, practice with the sheet. I think it's a lot easier to practice with the sheet than if the sheet is on your computer. Uh, maybe you're just a whiz on computers, but sometimes you need to scratch around and kind of see where it's at. So, is there any questions on that? We did that really fast, and we skipped some of them. Did everybody understand pretty much um, the scoring on that sheet? Yep, we're all good. Okay, so um, we have a, a this class uh, group of classes or this class. Um, we're doing a little bit different this time. We have different teachers, and um, we have really good teachers for each session. Um, and we try to mix it up a little bit to keep it a little more interesting. And we let the teachers weave in a little bit of their story on generosity. So um, tonight we have um, Jeff. Hall. I said that right, Jeff? Jeff Hall? Is that correct? Yeah, it's spelled weird, but it's just pronounced Hall. Yeah, so Jeff's not that weird, but his name is weird. So um, Jeff is uh, coming to us from Denver, Colorado tonight. And uh, Jeff, we have people from Chicago all the way to the West Coast and the Chicago is kind of East Coast. And a lot of Denver people, a lot of Utah people, a lot of Orange County, California people. So we have kind of a good blend of people. Jeff is going to um, tell us a little bit about himself, and then he's going to take us through class three. And Jeff is also going to be the lead on our Nigeria trip, which is coming up, I think, in two months um, in March, if I'm not mistaken. And I know uh, there's a few of you that are planning on going on that trip. So without further ado, um, we'll, 
we'll let you take it, Jeff. And um, Kim and I will chime in every once in a while um, with maybe something that we see that we think would be good to know. So Jeff, take it, take it away. Thanks so much, Daniel. Appreciate it. And yeah, excited to be on here. I see some familiar faces. And so what's up, Nancy and Gavin and the Fiddles and Trey. So that's awesome to be able to see some uh, some familiar faces. And uh, yeah, a little background on me before I jump into to some of the content. Um, yeah, as Daniel said, I'm coming from Denver. So just a quick show of hands. Who else is in Denver with me or Colorado? Okay, sweet. That's what's up. Um, and then I'm originally from New Jersey. Any show of hands of anyone from Jersey? Nancy, a little? Uh, or East Coast, I'll, I'll take. East Coast, anybody New from York. East Coast? <laughs> New York, sweet. That's right. Um, so yeah, originally born in Jersey, spent half my childhood there, my other half uh, out here in, in Denver. So I moved out here when I was 10. But I spent my summers back on the East Coast and, and then um, school year out here. Then uh, went to college in Florida. Um, and I was, on, I was on an obscure uh, sports team in college. And so if, uh, I'll see if anybody can guess what sports team I was on that doesn't know this already. So somebody that doesn't know, uh, if anyone wants to guess what, what obscure sports team I was on baseball you say baseball mm -hmm. nope less popular than that are you going to give us any hints or i did it's obscure it's not popular those are hints so far <laughs> yes, it's like tomorrow. there's thousands of teams college sports? lacrosse it's it's even more obscure than lacrosse i think growing Curling. Hold on. I like Say it again. Know. Curling. Yes, curling. Getting closer. In terms of obscurity, it has nothing to do with curling or ice or any other stuff. Uh, a different form of ice, a liquid form of ice that has to do with the vessels. diving. All right, close. It is on the water. Crew, you wrote crew. Not that, not crew, but the other one that's on the water. You're a sailor? Yeah, there we go. Sailing team. So I grew up racing <laughs> sailboats on the East Coast, uh, raced sailboats in college. Um, just a random obscure fact about me. So that's that's a lot of what uh, my childhood and, and college career looked like. Uh, then after college, I had an opportunity to um, I ended up just as a 22-year-old buying a one-way ticket to East Africa and lived in uh, in Rwanda for a year. And that year uh, really, really changed my life. It's why I'm a part of uh, GU right now. It's, it is kind of led me down this path of, of what is generosity and sort of exploring what that is, uh, really shaped what my you know, career in life and everything looks like. Um, and so I'll probably weave some stories from that um, throughout, throughout the class today. Um, but in terms of generosity, growing up, I didn't know much about it. So my view of generosity is I saw my parents put a folded check in the offering plate on church on Sundays. Um, and I heard some kind of, oh, we need to give to so-and-so uh, before the end of the year. And that was kind of like all I, I heard about generosity growing up. Show of hands, if anyone had a similar experience around generosity growing up here in David, sweet Cameron, is that how you say that? That's a cool spelling. Um, yeah, so that that's um, it, it took into kind of my uh, my adult years to really figure out what is generosity about, what does that mean, how to actually think about it, because um, it just wasn't really taught to me growing up. I, I got to see it a little bit, but I didn't really understand it. Um, and so this this class actually was really great. I think one of the big things I took away from when I went through the GU class was um, like who I'm really passionate about giving to. And I didn't really know that that was something you could like think through and be like, oh, actually, I'm really passionate about giving to these type of people or these type of organizations. And um, and I didn't know that. And so being able to figure that out and then go down that path uh, was great. OK, so my goal for this class is ideally for me to talk less and for you guys to be able to talk more. And so I'd love for, for this. I think it'd be a lot more fun. 
if there's a lot more group uh, participation and so people coming off mute and just being able to talk and answer questions. So what I'll do throughout the going through this uh, PowerPoint is I'm going to try to share stories. I think that's a great way to learn uh, and then have you guys be able to uh, to sh share it, uh, as well as we're going through it. Does that work? Yeah, let me get a couple things. Um, I need to know who add. We, we're trying to take roll. And okay. there's one of the boxes that says admin. So I'm not sure who that is. It's Brian. 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 What's your last name, Brian? Alexander. Brian. Okay, thank you. Yep. And if you could leave your camera on, we always like that. Cameras to be on. And uh, I'll let Kim know that um, that's you. And, and uh, the rest of there's three or four of you without a camera on, if you could turn on your cameras for us, we, it's part of kind of our requirements. Um, so if you could do that, we'd appreciate it. Thank you. Awesome. All right. I can jump into the PowerPoint. So I can share this from my screen. And then let me make sure. Okay, are you guys seeing the PowerPoint? I can't see you, so I don't know if you're nodding. No. Okay, is it loading or? No. Shoot, give me one second. There we, there we go. Okay, sweet, thanks. All right, yeah, I think my computer just going. Is loading a little slow here. All right, so we're uh, this is class three, I believe. And so we're going to talk through some objections to generosity. And so there's nine that uh, that you has identified. And then we, we might be able to talk through some others that come up also. OK, is that now loaded and you can see high impact generosity? Yes. Uh, yes, it is. Sweet. That is great. And then let me try to make this a little bit bigger so I can see more people. Okay, awesome. Oh, now I gotta... Sorry, I just gotta move some stuff around my screen so I can actually see what this says. Okay, great. So um, there's here's some of the, the major topics we're gonna go through today, which is some of the objections to generosity. And uh, so affordability is a big one. Um, and so, you know, if I can't put food on the table, how am I going to be able to be generous? And so that's something that we'll talk through. Bakers, I think that's a, a easy one that we, we see that makes us feel like, oh, we shouldn't give because does this person really need um, our support? Is this, is this actually genuine or is this just kind of a scam? Uh, example of the do panhandling with Jordans on or Rolex or whatever, asking for money. Uh, wasted investment. And so is this actually going to go to good use? Is this worth giving to? Is this going to go to drugs and alcohol? Or what is this for? Uh, another one, fear. That's a, I think that's a really, really big one, especially for Americans. Uh, it's just this Am, am I going to have enough if I give it to it, other people? I don't think I'm going to have enough for myself. That's a big one we'll talk through. Uh, government, that concept of hey, I'm already given basically half of my paycheck away. So uh, do I really need to give any more? Because there's all these welfare programs. And so uh, what else do I need to do? Yeah, my paycheck already goes there. Uh, and a small amount does in my head. I'm not a, I'm not a millionaire. I'm not a, you know, I don't have all this money. So can... $25 or $50 here or there really even do anything. So we'll talk through that also. Then crooks, um, just like Daniel was talking about, hey, there's ways that these some of these organizations are hiding money with salaries and they're doing kind of shady stuff here and there, whatever. And so uh, don't trust charities, so I'm not gonna give. Uh, entitlement. I work really hard for my money. I pulled myself up from my bootstraps and they can do it too. And, and so, uh, you know, if I did it, they can do it. I don't need to give money to them. And then the last one we'll talk about today is, will they become entitled? So, hey, I gave them 
food today? Are they going to rely on my food tomorrow? And it's actually not going to help them overall. All right, any initial questions uh, before I dive into our first one? Okay, sweet. So, um, yeah, a big one that that we see as a, as a objection to giving is this this idea of affordability of man, my rent is due. I got this, you know, mortgage. I got um, all these bills and everything. And so, for me to be able to think about giving to other people, and I haven't saved for my retirement, I'm living paycheck to paycheck. Uh, all of those things. Uh, how am I able to start giving to somebody else? So I'm going to ask this question. I'd love to hear your answers. What are the three different ways that we can give? So feel free to come off mute because I actually can't see everyone. Uh, so just come off mute or I you can put it in the chat. Like spending time with someone or giving your time? Yep, time. Perfect. So there's... I do these in three T's. So time is one of the T words. There's two other T words I'm looking for. Oh, I'm seeing them in the chat. Okay, so in the chat, we got time. Talent. Um, oh yeah, who said talent? Okay. Erica, awesome. Yep. So time, talent, and am I seeing treasure. anyone in and treasure? Yep. So money. Thanks, Trey. Money is is in. Thanks, Gavin. Um, there. So time, talent, and treasure. So when you think about affordability, you there's not just money, right? If, what, in terms of giving, there's there's three different aspects of giving, and that's giving of your time, giving of your talent, and giving of your treasure. And I was thinking about this if if anybody has given before of any of those three things uh the one that normally sticks with people isn't the money that was given to them it's normally either the wisdom that they gave to them um, or the time that they gave to them and so there's this uh it's this like quote about parenting that says um kids won't remember like what you like did for them, but I'll remember how you how you made them feel. All right, maybe it's not even just for parenting. Maybe it's just for people in general. But it's, people re won't remember, yeah, basically what you said or what you did. It's how you made how you made them feel. Uh, has anyone heard that quote before? So how does that resonate with this idea of time, talent, and treasure? So it's not just treasure, but thinking more on the time and talent, sharing those things with somebody. Uh, can anybody speak to that in relation to that quote? Was that question confusing? Oh, uh, I'm hearing, uh, gives people respect. Oh, sorry, Jenny, go for it. No, I said to say it again. Okay, so I think what the, the concept I'm trying to get to is, and maybe I, I wanna try not to answer my own question, but sometimes if you give somebody money, it's less impactful than you sit with them and you give them your time. So maybe I'll re rephrase the question and ask you different ways. Can you remember in your life where somebody gave you something that wasn't money that was really impactful for you and willing to share that? Yeah, I, I've got plenty of, of times um, where people have been able to uh, sit down with me and walk through my life and, and um, giving me their time um, to just sit down and where I can ask them a bunch of questions and they'll answer and give me their wisdom and their insight on it. And uh, man, just the love people can have given me um, through giving me their wisdom and, and things like that has just been, um, I, I mean, there's no measure to money in terms of like the value I've gotten from that. So, yeah, that's great, Trey. Thanks. Appreciate that. Any other examples? Um, volunteering, uh, time can, uh, it can like change kind of the way people. So 
if you volunteer, it can actually uh, tell people that people can actually be good, a good person in this world and try their best to help others more than themselves. Yes, absolutely. I love that, Kevin. Is there times where you have volunteered uh, recently? Um, I, I volunteer at a, or I have volunteered at a Project Angel Heart. And then um, I've also, I don't really know if this is volunteering, but I've helped at like uh, cross purpose events. Graduation. Like, yeah, that's volunteering. That's great. Awesome. Thanks. Uh, all right. Any other, anyone else want to share before I move on? Sweet. Okay. So one of the things I think about this with affordability and we'll be curious if, if, you, if this resonates with you guys, but sometimes I'll think about what is the best use of my money when I don't want to give it to somebody. And I'm like, what am I going to do with, let's say it's a $50, like, what kind of impact is that going to have in my life? Like, am I going to buy another hoodie or an, some meals out or something? And like, will I remember that versus uh, $50 in certain scenarios can be really impactful for people. So there's some, some young men that I um, support in their education back in Rwanda, where I used to live. And that's a, that's a trimester for them in school. So then I think about like, if I don't want to sponsor this kid for another trimester, what like what would that fifty dollars do in my life versus what it can do for them? And so I try to relate that to like affordability. It's like I can't afford not to do this. Like this is is so much more impactful going to Alexander than it is uh, in my wallet just doing nothing. Um, oh, let me click to the next. Okay. Can somebody who can see the whole screen read this um, passage for me? Bring the Bring whole time. Oh. <laughs> it's okay. You can go. No, go ahead. It's, it's fine. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will be, there will not be enough room to store it. Man, thank you. Appreciate that. All right. Who, who can, I guess, what is this passage saying and what are some responses uh, to this? Um, I would say, um, having faith and um, your finances and being generous and giving and, you know, things that we've been learning, like not expecting things and you will get that um, in return because God will still bless you. Yeah, absolutely. How do you say your name? It's Ramisha. Ramisha. Awesome. Thanks, Ramisha. You're welcome. Yeah, absolutely. I uh, there's a lot of times in the Bible that it talks about, you know, somebody who is faithful with a little will be given a lot. And so I don't remember a parable that Jesus spoke about that even if you're not a Christian, it's still, uh, that's a good teaching regardless of faith background. And he talks about uh, this, this guy goes away and gives each of his servants a certain amount of money. So he gives them talents. So like uh, tangible coins. And I, if I'm remembering correctly, he gave one, one to one person, two to another person and five to a, to a third person. Is that the right numbers? I don't see anybody's heads moving. So I'm not sure. I'm just going to go with those numbers. Um, and then he, he went away for a while and came back and was like, okay, I gave you guys this money. Uh, now, what did you do with it? And um, and then one of them went and invested it and made it the five turned into 10. The other one had invested the two and uh, turned that into four talents. And then the other guy that only had one was like, hey, I know you're a harsh ruler. I buried it so that I wouldn't lose it. And I think where, you know, this parable is talking about is like 
go do stuff with this money that I give you with this time that I give you with this talent that I give you with this treasure that I give you and go multiply it. Go make more things happen with it. Don't just bury that in uh, in the dirt. Right? And trust me that I will continue to multiply that. So bring me your, your tithe, bring me your 10th uh, of your money and let's distribute that to others. Um, all right, so the other thing I, I really like about this is this idea that the, so relating this to exercise. So if you think of when you're exercising, you actually uh, use up a ton of energy to be able to, uh, to be able to like do a really hard workout. And when you use up all that energy, you're, you're fully like depleted, but then it actually makes you be able to be stronger and better. And so the next time you do that exercise, you're actually way better at it. You guys tracking so far by not, uh, not of your head. Okay. So I'm trying to relate that to, uh, giving, right. You actually deplete yourself. You, you give, uh, a, a sacrificially so that it actually hurts so that you're actually feeling it and i think it's got the same type of law where you do that and then it actually comes back uh, a, a lot stronger and a lot uh, a lot more of it does that co concept sort of make sense all right anyone agree or disagree totally good if you disagree that would be more fun anyone disagree or agree with with that statement agree okay and so I, I think this is actually like not just a Christian thing, right? That we have this in the non-Christian world too, and we just call it karma, right? So what, what goes around comes around. What you give is what you receive. And it's just it's actually just a biblical principle uh, use, using a different term so that you don't, so that it doesn't look like a biblical principle. But I do uh, think that that's uh, a big part of giving. All right, can um, somebody read this proverb to consider for me? Yeah, Gavin, thanks. A generous person will prosper. Um, anyone who gives water will receive a flood in return. Mm, absolutely. Okay, so what does that mean? Anybody, a generous person will prosper, fact, and anyone who gives water will receive a flood in return. What does that mean? Yeah, Gavin. Um, it means like say, um, if you give, what comes, what uh, goes around comes around. So like, you give somebody, say, you buy somebody a meal, or you help somebody out, or um, you give somebody money. Eventually, it'll come back to you in any way, shape, or form. Um, and sometimes it'll be more, sometimes it'll be less, but it'll, generosity will come back to you. So it's kind of like a chain reaction. If you help somebody out, they'll want to be generous to somebody else. And then that person will want to be generous to somebody else. And it's, it just um, goes on and then it cycles around. Yeah, absolutely, Gavin. I totally agree. There was, um, man, the story of this guy who, he was walking down the street and somebody's backpack was open and some papers fell out. And so he didn't think much of it, grabbed the papers on the ground, picked them up real quick, tapped the dude on the shoulder and was like, Oh, Hey, your backpack's open. You know, these, these papers uh, fell out. The guy who grabbed the papers was like, well, yeah, the guy said, thank you, man. I appreciate that. Oh, it would really suck to lose these papers. That was awesome. So the guy who grabbed the papers from the ground was like, wow, I feel really good about this and doing something and not expecting anything in return. Then the guy whose backpack was open was like, wow, a stranger did something really nice for me without expecting anything in return. Then there was somebody that was watching it was like, oh, that's really awesome. That was really nice that you did that. And so it's a third party is even affected by this, uh, this small act of kindness. And so it actually is released it, it, chemically in your body is oxytocin. And so this is like this, uh, this chemical drug. Have you guys heard of the term oxytocin? Some people, yes, okay. Plenty of you might know more about this than me. What I know about it is there is this, well, very little. I just know this is this chemical that actually makes you feel connected 
uh, to other people. It actually gives you joy. So that's when uh, uh, moms are having their like birthing babies. Oxytocin is just going crazy through your body. And it's actually that chemical that's bonding you to your baby. And that same sort of reaction is happening when you do something generous for somebody else. And so you could actually get oxytocin released into your body uh, where you're you're feeling like joy. And I really think that's that's a, it's a biblical principle, but it's it's true uh, in a secular world, too, where it's better to give than to receive. Right. That sounds like a crazy term. It's better to give than receive. But this is like kind of a scientific way to prove that by actually giving you are the one experiencing joy and uh, in this increased level of oxytocin. And so it's a really great way to uh, yeah, be generous and you give some water and you receive a flood. I think that's totally true. All right, let's move to the next. All right, so this is the second objection that um, we're gonna talk through tonight and it is about fakers. Oops. All right, so this concept is like, are they really actually people that need my money or are they just faking it? So this is like, yeah, you've got uh, the Rolex on the side of the street or somebody's panhandling at the end of the, the street, right? And they've got the Rolex or they've got nicer shoes on than you do or whatever. My thought on that is that's not really, well, there's a couple of things. That's not really our concern. Our job is actually on the giving side, not what the money does and, and where it's used. And it's really this heart posture towards, uh, I'm, I want to give because that is this desire of, of my heart to help somebody else. What they do with that money isn't as much of your concern. I think there's ways to be really wise with your generosity. Um, but if you if you want to lose control of your money, you give it to somebody else. Like that's that's how that works. Uh, and so many things happen with the money that you give that you know somebody. I think there's a lot of fakers out there, but that's not really God's call. God's call doesn't say, make sure you're giving to people that deserve it or that aren't faking or that tried every other avenue. It says, God says, man, give till the, the need is met. Um, all right, I want to share a quick story from yesterday, actually. So I was getting my car, I went to go get my car washed. And I go to like the cheapest one around that you actually have to do it yourself, right? So you're like, put your credit card in, you click this, the timer, and then you're like running around your car as fast as you possibly can to um, like spray your you know car off and all that kind of stuff. Anyone done one of those type of car washes before? All right, one, two, okay, great. So it's like this race to see how little money I can spend washing my car. Uh, then as I get done, this guy comes up to me and is like asking if he can drive my car and, you know, obviously like for money. And I'm like, my first instinct is, uh, are you kidding me? Do you see, I was like, I'm trying to spend as little money as possible washing my car. Uh, and so no, I don't want you to, uh, to dry it. And then I doubled the amount of money it costs to wash my car. But then as I got talking to him, so that's like my first instinct. Right? That's like, that's just sinful, I guess. Right. That's like, I'm, it's like pride getting in the way. And then um, as I got talking to him, he mentions he's from like Venezuela. We're using Google Translate to talk. He's got a family that he's trying to support back in Venezuela. He's escaping, you know, crazy stuff. If you're in Denver, you probably heard about, I don't even know how many thousands and thousands of Venezuelans have made their way to Denver and trying to figure out life. And so, um, so then it was like, of course I want this guy to drive my car. He's trying to work for money. It's not even really, it's a form of generosity, but he's he's actually trying to do work in the meantime. And uh, and so then it was like, yeah, here is, you know, some money or whatever to drive the car and the car looks great and all that stuff. But it was, it just took this mindset shift from wanting control over my money to being open to like, what does that look like to, you know, be generous with somebody that could use those, 
eight dollars way more than than I could. Uh, okay, any thoughts on fakers? Anyone experience any fakers or uh, don't like giving because of this idea of fakers? I always think there's different levels of how generous people are. <clears throat> and um, Jeff and Nate would be at a higher level than, than other people. And so what we're trying to share a little bit too is if you're in like your infant stages or your your growing stages of generosity <clears throat> we don't want you to we don't want you to just give to give it's not the point to just you know to because you feel guilty and so we suggest that you know if you're uncomfortable um go to number three on here go do, be generous don't don't like instead of giving the panhandler let's say twenty dollars um don't just opt out at that point um, if that's kind of where you're at, then then look for a way you can be generous with the person that you trust, because there's people everywhere in your life that that need help. And so um, we're not trying to give you an op on being helpful here. <laughs> so but we're trying to say if if your level is not really good with this person, you know, um, go to this person over here that can really that somebody you trust and, you know, maybe it's. Maybe it's you end up giving more to that third person because you're trying to help them in their life to grow and to you know get get their life a little more together. Sometimes if you're giving to a panhandler, you may never see them again, and that kind of lets you off the hook in a sense. And so just always look for ways to be generous. Is what you know we're just trying to give you a lot of ways to look at this. Yeah, thanks, Daniel. I think the last thing I think about with this objective is the idea that giving isn't uh, isn't just about the rate of return. So, you know, kind of an investment term is like how much money you put into something is how much, you know, how much return will you get on that investment? And that's not always what giving is about. A lot of times it's just a, it's just a heart posture and just giving uh, to somebody that has a need and what happens with that money is kind of on them. It's not on you. Um, but yeah, I totally agree. Start with giving to people that you trust and starting small is a great way to do that. All right, I'm going to move to objective three, which is wasted money. So I see this guy in the corner every, every week. I think he's a drunk. If I give him money, he's going to buy alcohol. Give some Give something other than money. Okay, so have you guys seen, I mean, that I would assume everybody has come across somebody on the street that is asking for money, right? And looks like they are not going to use that to go fill out job applications. Has, has everybody experienced those type of people asking for money? Who has, has anybody come up with a better way to handle that besides giving the money. And I think there's, you know, some clues on, on the screen here, but has anyone done anything or have friends or family that have done something that uh, is different than just giving money? Yep, I saw a couple of hands go up. Sorry, I already forgot how to say your name again. Oh, uh, Ramisha. Ramisha, Ramisha, yes, thanks. All right, Ramisha and then Gavin. Um, So one of the things that I started doing because I was like, okay, like, not trying to judge people but like what if they have like some habits or whatnot that i could be helping to um you know help them do just because i gave them money and you know i kind of look at that with just different aspects but what can i give that would be more beneficial so i just started giving like if i like food or snacks or things like that in my car um i'll just give them that instead of giving them money so good i love that because if, if you want the money to go to food then you can just give them food. I think that's great. Uh, Gavin, do you have an example or a thought? And then Eric. Uh, I've seen here a few people, and I know a few people who do this. They have like uh, Ziploc bags, right? And they put like bottled water and like, uh, I think like a toothbrush uh, and toothpaste and a few other like, and like a, a, a mini bag of pretzels or something. And they just put together like a little kit and then they hand them out instead of giving out money. Yeah. Oh, I think that's great. I love that. 
Erica, do you have an example? Yeah, um, I'm I'm pretty partial to animals, and I I do know that uh, a lot of homeless people have dogs. I keep milk bones in my car to give to the dogs whenever I oh, see them. Oh, that's great. Yeah, that's perfect because that's both that's like both helping the actual homeless person, but you have this deeper heart and uh, for animals, and so being able to help their animal that's awesome. Love that. Cool. Any other thoughts on how to deal with or tricks with uh, giving money away in certain situations where you want to make sure it's going to the right cause. Yeah. So I will just take them with me and like go buy the food that they say that they're hungry. Man. I'm like, let's go to a restaurant. Okay. Well, let's go eat. I'm walking to, there's McDonald's right here. Like, let's go in there. And I'll tell, Man, tell me about that experience for, for you. What, what, if anything, did you gain out of doing that? Um, it is insightful to experience the different responses that you get from individuals. Some folks are extremely grateful. Some folks are like, no, nah, I just want the money. Some folks, I don't know, well, that McDonald's is too far from here. That's a literal <laughs> answer that I got. You know? Uh, so, yeah, it's just, it. it's insightful. I, I learn a lot. By just offering like, to do it. And I love that. I feel like it's so also much. like taking an extra mile, right? Like taking the time out of your day to actually like take them to the restaurant um, and like spend that quality time with them. I know we were talking about like time and things like that. That's a, you know, a way of taking time out to benefit someone else. You're absolutely right. That's, that's given up both his time and his treasure. Um, and if he's, you know, sharing wisdom, whatever it can be given of his talents too. I, I mean, that's just a great way to do it. I love that. Uh, Hayden, someone else? Oh, Hayden. Hayden has her hand raised. I don't know if you can see it. Thanks. Yeah. So I think just kind of what uh, Shanti and I think Brian were saying was like, it makes it more personal. It kind of gives it that human factor. Um, I feel like if we sometimes, you know, like the money does help, but sometimes when we just give somebody money, it kind of makes it seem like a machine. You know, it's like like a vending machine. You give, we give them money, and we feel good that we did something, right? But it's not. It shouldn't be that. It's not that kind of exchange. It should be a more personal human exchange. And so, personally, I've when I've been able to stop and have a one on one interaction and kind of see more of that helping effect, it gives it a more human perspective. And I think it's beneficial to both of us because, I mean, how many people actually take time out of their day to sit and talk and hear the life experiences of that person? Yeah, absolutely. I totally agree with that. Thanks. Do you think there's ever times to, to either not give somebody money or to stop giving somebody money? And if so, what, what would be an example of that? um when you can witness or have evidence of them using it to do something harmful um like directly harmful either to themselves or directly um to other people or to the environment um as like the purpose of their use of that money um and it's not necessarily meant to be uh an act of punishment but to maybe prompt a deeper discussion that could then figure out okay like <laughs> is there a better way to use this money or is there another avenue that i could uh present like or or, or be generous with that would cut down on any harm right um you know uh would spending time with that person um, prevent them from uh, harming themselves uh, with what that money would have gone to otherwise um, and so on and so forth. Totally, David. I, I totally agree. Any other uh, thoughts on that in addition to what David said? Any other reasons to not give or to stop give giving somebody money? Uh, 
All right, let me give you a scenario that just happened to me recently, and then tell me if you think I did this right or wrong. Does that sound fun? All right, so uh, there's a young man that I mentored for um, for many, many years since he was 12 years old. He's 22 now, so 10 years. And um, three years ago, he uh, got sent to prison, was, spent the last three years in prison, and talking to him every week while he's in prison, putting money on his books and stuff and and getting to you know connect with him and encourage him and all that stuff. And then he got out um, two months ago or so. And uh, he pretty quickly started asking for money for things. And uh, and then. I, so the first one was like to get his permit. So I'm like, OK, good. I want you to get your permit so that you can get a license, so that you can be driving to work, and, and that seems like a value add thing. Then um, the next day, he asked for more money for food. And um, then I said, hey, that's great. Let me see the permit that you got with the last money that I gave you. And oh, I, I couldn't, uh, I sat at somebody else's house. I, I'll get it for you another time, but I really need this money for this food, da da da. And then just back and forth. And I'm like, all right, well, can you show me the permit tomorrow then before I give you any other money for anything else? So I gave him money again. Then the next time it was like, oh man, I owe somebody this and I really need to give him money. Can you please send me money? Da, da, da. And this whole time I'm telling him, hey, how many job, jobs have you applied for? How many interviews have you gone on? All this stuff. And he's kind of like starting to be like, oh, I don't think I need that. A job will come to me if I really need a job. And and then he started hanging out with people that he used to hang out with, which is why he got sent to prison from what he was, who he was hanging with. And then uh, finally he was like, oh, I need, my, I need $800 for, because uh, I need to pay this person this and for rent for that and all this kind of stuff that just wasn't really adding up. And he was saying different things at different times. And I never saw the permit that he got and all this stuff. But man, this is a dude I care deeply about. I've been walking with for 10 years. Uh, all right, so let me open, I'll stop the story there. What would you do uh, in that scenario? If so in those types of scenarios, man, we normally would, so we always at Project 2, we kind of always focus on like uh, the fact that like everybody has a capability to be able to support themselves and we're here to kind of help them get there right so it's always a matter of teaching people to fish it's never a conversation about which is giving just to give even the children in our neighborhood like they don't they used to come in and be like come and just ask for money and stuff like that but now literally we have about 10 and 10 to 15 teenagers preteens coming up and they're like uh i need money for this what work can I do? You know, so like, I think that's the more valuable thing is like in instilling in them that lesson that like, you have the ability to go get it and we don't help you go get it, but like, it's your responsibility to get it. I'm not giving you anything, you earn what you have. And I think it's important because doing it otherwise, like really robs them of that dignity of work, you yeah, know, and it it's more dependent upon you. And like it's really it's like, no, what are you about to do? I'm okay, but like I'm here to help, but like I can't, I'm not doing it for you. You know, so it's like taking the time to walk through, walk down that particular path, you know, and then you really begin to find out what folks are really about and what they really have the capacity for. Yeah, well said, Brian. Appreciate that. Steven, you're off mute. Were you gonna say something? Or is it Stephen? Steven? Um, <laughs> you know, so it sounds like he's just getting situated and he needs a transition plan. And so, um, you know, what you get is one day it's one thing, another day it's, you know, one day it's food, other day it's bus, another day it's something else. And there's no real, um, plan, you know, to, to um, you know, then now he's hanging out with people from before. And it's kind of like, Going in circles. <laughs> so, Absolutely. Got a, uh, uh, yeah, you, 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 you need a plan because, um, yeah, you need a plan. You need resources. You know, food means, um, you know, food pantry. 
you know. Um, yeah, volunteering there. I mean, if you're going to need something on a weekly basis, right? Like you're going to need to be, uh, you're going to need to know those things. And so just getting aware of what reality looks like. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and so just to kind of end that story is what I did was ended up having to make that hard decision of kind of cut him off, even though all of his messages are, bro, I thought you loved me. I thought you cared about me. Uh, you know, if you do nothing else for me in the rest of my life, you do this, da, da, da. But it's like, that was, that this is no longer helping him, kind of going back to what David is saying too. And I'm like, hey, if if you actually want help, come sit at my house and I'll go over job applications for you and I will help you apply for jobs so that you can go uh, fish. But I'm not going to give you any more money. That's because I love you, not because I don't love you. And if you don't see that now, that's that's not on me. Let me try to release that from from this burden that I feel, and and just man, say, hey, I'll, I'll help you with my time and my uh, talents, but treasure is not what you need right now. So yeah, great. All right, any other thoughts on wasted money before we move on to fear? All right, cool. Oh, give time or talent rather than treasure. Great. Okay, so um, fear. I think this was a big one. I, I'm going to say for Americans, but I, just a context, I'm, I'm more familiar with America versus Africa. So in Africa, there is no government programs. There is no welfare. There's no Section 8 housing. There's no food stamps. If you're uh, hungry and don't have food and none of your neighbors give it to you, you just die of starvation. Like that's what that looks like. And yet in America, man, we're so worried about giving up our money. And yet, like, we're so far away from that, that anything like that happened. There's so many safety nets in this country for us, whether it's actual uh, community or it's uh, government assistance. But um, I think that's just a, it's a big one that we need to get over that I personally need to get over because I'm like, all right, if I can give this percentage of my income, but really like I just need to, I want to save for, you know, retirement or for new this or new that. And it's just all fear-based that, that ultimately I think God will not provide for me. That's really what it, what it comes down to. And if we, if we can get over that, then we realize that this is, uh, it's actually his money that he's just given to us to steward. And it's not ours anyway. Uh, and so that's a, a posture that I'm working towards having and, and uh, got a long ways to go still with that. Um, so, yes, prudence is important, and saving money is a good thing, and budgeting and and all that stuff, um, and balance with generosity. And let me just move this. Yeah, if you lost your job, wouldn't it be great if somebody else could help you? And fear is a sign of. Sorry, I got to move my screen here. Uh, lack of faith or trust. Faith in yourself. Trust in family or friends to help. Uh, trust or faith in God to provide. All right, let me get some responses to that. Do you guys agree or disagree with fear as a sign of lack of faith or trust? Is that true? All right, I'm seeing some maybes. Who's got a... Serena, will you be willing to share? Sure. Um, yeah, I agree with that. The, like, you can't like faith and fear can't really coexist. And so you have to choose one. And then that's what you live with. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Anybody uh, else agree or disagree and have a different thought about faith? Basically being the lack or fear is, is the lack of faith. Does anyone else have anything to add to that? All right, so um, one thing I think I was thinking about when I was thinking about fear is a, is a different young man that I mentored growing up. He grew up uh, here in Denver, grew up Section 8 housing, which is you know government housing, and uh, had uh, was living on food stamps and like really was basically had fear that he wasn't going to have enough money to survive and like also just thrive and to like buy new clothes and, and to 
just have money to do the things he wanted to do. Um, that same kid came with me on a GU trip to Africa. And then he showed up there and was like, holy crap, I didn't realize how freaking rich I am in America and how, yeah, I didn't necessarily have some of the things that random other Americans had. But now that I'm seeing other side of the world, like I am so blessed. And then I remember him, he called his mom one, one night and just like apologized for being like uh, mad or whatever that she didn't have dinner every night and all this kind of stuff. And he just was like, holy crap, I am so uh, blessed. And, and it was really just a shift of perspective. And I think that's a lot of what fear is, is this, it's a perspective that I'm not going to have enough. And that goes back to, man, if you shift that to faith, man, I believe that God's going to provide for me or this perspective of you're actually comparing yourself to the wrong people. So comparison uh, is, is not a good thing. Um, but especially, so if you compare yourself to somebody that's got more than you, you feel, uh, like ashamed and you want that and you've got envy or if you compare yourself with somebody that's got less than you you can kind of have some pride but in this scenario where he had this comparison that he's never had before where he's like holy crap i don't realize how much stuff i i have and all these clothes and this car and and that fact that i did have housing and we did get groceries and and so he just um anyway that was a, a, that was a good shift of perspective that i loved to see in him all right, so last thing on fear, I want to hear your responses to this quote from a guy named Dave Ramsey. Does everybody know who Dave Ramsey is? So he's like a, a guru on money that uh, he's like a Christian guy that like talks about budgeting. So, uh, but one of the quotes that that he said is, money is a terrible master, but an excellent servant. All right. I want to hear your thoughts if you agree with that. And then how can you relate that to uh, fear? Um, I would like to say that um, it being a master, meaning uh, you can idolize it. Uh, you can idolize money. And in a way that you do that is by fearing um, the constant flow of you being able to basically live and um, sustain off of what you have. And so if you're just constantly looking for that, you can easily idolize um, possessions. Yeah, and absolutely. So that, yeah. yeah, absolutely. I, I think an exercise that I, I think goes along with that is when you're feeling like fearful around money to actually give more of it away. And what that does is it takes this hold that you've got of like, no, this is my money and I'm afraid that I'm not going to have enough and say, no, that money doesn't have a grip on me. It's not my master. It is my servant. And so I'm going to tell it what to do and I'm going to give it away. And that takes away some of the, the power that it, that it can have on you. The Bible talks about money more than anything else, uh, any other topic. That's my understanding. And so it is important because it the love of money is the root of all evil. It can have this really evil thing. And the way that to help that is you is to give it away so that you don't have that same power over you. Awesome. Any other thoughts on money is a terrible master and an excellent servant, but an excellent servant. All right, moving to ob objection five. Uh, government. So who agrees with this statement? Or did, yeah, who agrees with this statement? Half my paycheck already goes to the government. Aren't they supposed to take care of the poor? Anyone willing to agree with that statement? I think there's validity to it. I mean, we're given money for food stamps, we're giving money for social security, we're giving money, well, maybe ask that, what else do we give money for out of our paychecks every every pay period that goes towards helping other people that aren't us? What other things are there? Fire department, police department, roads, water, potentially sanitation. Yeah, so we're giving like- Schools. 30, 
schools, you have 30, so I don't know, depends on tax brackets and stuff, but 20 to 40% of our income is already going towards giving. So why would we give anything beyond that? Jenny, are you about to? Yeah, I've we we you know two phones in the same or two devices and I got to figure it out. Um, yeah, I mean, I worked in fundraising for a long time, and it's crazy. I think one thing we always like say whenever, especially when it gets into like the higher giving, is that, um, you know, especially you like you vote with your money, right? And so, like a lot of times, like you know, your vote, you may have not gotten your vote or whatever, but, um, you can give towards what you want to support, which is the cool thing. And then especially, I mean, even in like, especially in our company, there's so our company, our country, there's so many ways to avoid taxes by giving. And so you can actually give and like, you can decide, you know, what is supported if you don't agree with like what the government's supporting or how they're doing it. Like that's an argument that's often made, especially when you get into like higher giving and stuff. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's just another way to decide like what your money goes to. Whereas like with your taxes, you know, you only have so much say. I love that. I think that's a great answer. And you, yeah, you get to the places that you give to make you give less to the government so you can just like you say, and decide where you want that to go. Awesome. All right, for the sake of time, I'm gonna kind of keep going through this a little bit quicker. My response to this is, is I guess, pretty similar to what this says is, how good of a job is the government actually doing? Are the problems solved? My perspective of that is the government has created systems that do a good job of helping people be in poverty, but not help people get out of it or help people be in their situation with not having good housing, but not help them actually get better housing. Or uh, yeah, it helps people stay where they're at. And that's something I'm passionate about is helping people move on to the next step and progress. And uh, and so that's where I think the government, that's just, they're, they're missing the mark or they're, they're not completing the, the whole cycle of, of helping. It's just a component to it. And that we as fellow Christians or fellow Americans or neighbors or other people in this world or whatever, we have this obligation to be able to help in the other areas that the government isn't able to. Anyone disagree with that? I would love it if if you did. It'd be fun to hear. But uh, any thoughts or any disagreements with that that idea? Okay, I'm going to go to um i guess entitlement is still part of government okay so rolling through this real quick what's wrong with saying that everyone is entitled to the basics such as food shelter and health care so government programs are inevitably abused people get lazy people manipulate the system uh and so i think that's ties into what I was, my theory is uh, to help people be in the place that they're currently at, or, or it's kind of this baseline bottom. It's this net that catches them at the bottom, but it keeps them there. It doesn't help them get back up. Uh, and then a quote to consider, a government-sponsored welfare program programs are designed to fail. Instead of reducing poverty, they actually tend to increase poverty. Does anyone... I uh, think that that is true or false. Do you agree with that? The government programs actually yeah. increase poverty. Yeah, Brian. Yeah, I think it is true. And I think it's, it's true because you got to understand that laws are developed to, like laws and regulations are developed to like regulate behavior, right? To push folks' behavior in a particular direction. And it's just super, super clear how these laws have influence the behavior, right? However well-meaning uh, of the individuals that they were intended to be a benefit to. Yeah. And yeah, thanks, Brian. Absolutely. Any other thoughts on this on government programs? I have a thought. Yeah. 
Um, so I was actually talking about this topic with my parents the other day. And um, my dad, when he was in medical school, my um, family was really poor. So they were on like food stamps and stuff. And it's just hard with government programs like that, because if you make like if you're working over a certain amount of hours, then you're crossing like the threshold, I guess, of how much money you're supposed to be making. So to be able to use the, the like programs and stuff, you can't make very much money. So you have to work less. So it's kind of just like a never ending cycle of like you're never making enough money to be financially independent um, because you still have to depend on these programs. But it's kind of just like a lose lose situation. Yes, absolutely. Sorry, my mine had cut cut out a little bit, but I was, I was hearing. Hopefully, everyone else heard it though. But that yeah, you, as you pay or as you start making more, then you're you get less government uh, support. And there's this thing called the cliff effect, where you make more money, your your support drops off this cliff, but it drops off way faster than the amount of money you're making. So it's de incentivizes you to make more money you're like all right i gotta say 18 dollars an hour i don't want to raise because if i go to 1850 i actually lose way more than that in my benefits so yeah absolutely okay great um all right so the government gives billions of foreign aid would my 50 dollars really do anything and is, and is this foreign aid really working that's just another thing to, to uh, think through. There's tons of money going out there, but there's there's fifty dollars to your neighbor that could be really really beneficial, or to an organization down the street that your government is not giving to. And then what is this? Be generous in areas that is not covered by all by government programs. Yeah, absolutely. There's plenty of things the government does not even know about to support. And so that's a great way for us to get involved in those areas. Okay, objection six, do small amounts matter? So this idea that, hey, Bill Gates has billions of dollars. Let's let him do the giving because him giving away a billion a year is way more impactful than anything I can do. Uh, does anybody have any uh, agree or disagree with that statement? Do you think it's not worth giving because uh, other people can give a lot more? Or if you or do you think it is still worth giving, even if other people can give a lot more and why? Yeah, real quick, I just think giving has a multi has like a, a multiplication effect, uh, not only monetarily, but like energetically as well. And when people see you giving, they're encouraged to give. I think everybody kind of really wants to. They don't see it. So I think it is important that even if you give, you know, a dollar, right? But it's it's about what you give you know, according to what you have, you know, uh, it's about yep. showing that sacrifice and setting the example. Yep. Totally agree. I would also yep. say that given that a lot of these issues are still happening, clearly that one person giving a billion dollars still isn't cutting it, right? The same reason why, like the assumption of, oh, the government's taking care of it, so I don't have to give, it goes for like, just replace government with, Bill Gates or whoever else is giving that like gigantic amount and you realize, oh, it's still worth me giving because it clearly isn't solving the issue. Totally agree. Gavin, do you have your hand raised? Sweet. Okay, so um, it doesn't really matter um, how much you own as long as you give and your heart is in the right place, um, as long as you give with your heart in the right place. So even if somebody gives, um, say, $500 and you only gave like 100 your gift still matters because it all goes to the same purpose. Totally agree with that. I think that's great, Gavin. The other thing I'd add is I think when you're you're giving person to person and, and with, with relationship, a $50 in relationship can be way more impactful than 500 without. And so what I mean by that is, you know, $50 helping somebody with groceries and then going over there and cooking with them and spending time with them and helping them through this grieving process or whatever's going on can be way more impactful than somebody's just throwing money at them and, and 
they're just they don't have the relationship side of it and they're just getting money so i think there's a lot of ways where smaller amounts can can be way more impactful okay um yeah and tons of people giving a little money is still is a lot more than one person giving a lot of money Is this your fifty dollars give responsibilities? Yeah. Okay, so uh, objective number seven is crooks. So I just don't trust charities. There are so many crooks out there. Uh, so part of that, there's truth to that, and that's what's great about what you guys started this class with is you can actually look at nine nineties and figure out uh, the financials of these organizations, and that. That's kind of the the back end side, plus like actually having conversations with them and meeting with them and going seeing their facilities and having informed giving. Um, and because a lot of the giving, some of the examples I was talking about are like one on one. It's not through a nonprofit. It's not a five hundred one c three. It's just giving something to your neighbor. Uh, but then there's also just giving to institutions, giving to nonprofits, and there's a lot more ways to have have them have accountability. And so I think that's what's great is do the research. Then. Uh, something else I think we touched on, but I wanted to share again is this idea that as Christians, if you if you believe uh, if you believe, if you are a Christian, then this idea is man, this money uh, isn't mine, and and so when it, if that's your posture, this is just something that God has given me to steward, and if you feel like and God's given me to give that money away, that's all your call is to do. It's what what happens with somebody on the other side of that is no longer part of your responsibility. It's just this heart posture towards, towards giving, which a couple of you guys mentioned. I think that's really great. Um, and then, all right, the need, oh, entitlement, I will go into that. Sorry, I'm just going through a little bit quick. I wanna make sure we end on on time and have some, some questions or time for anything else at the end. So entitlement, I think is another big one, especially for, for us uh, in America, we just, kind of are around that and so we, we breed a lot of entitlement so i work hard for my money i deserve this um i worked my tail off for this i put myself through college you know i did whatever to achieve these things but i think the the big part of the entitlement is there's so much that we were we were given that we don't deserve and that that has come just from being born i mean if you're born in america to two parents um that went to you know and went to high school or even college like that's crazy what you uh how far ahead you are than everybody else or just born in america period um how much farther ahead ahead we are so it's this this entitlement for something that we didn't control right we didn't get to decide where we were going to be born and other people who were born in developing countries didn't get to decide that they were going to be born there. And so I think that's something really good for us to consider as we're going through uh, the thoughts on entitlement. Uh, yeah, wealth entitlement, the right to keep what you have earned. Uh, what enables you to be entitled? So I think one of the things I think through with this wealth entitlement is that's a, it's this assumption that we deserved it and that we're the ones that earned it. And it's not by man, the grace of God or the help of others or the, the situation that we just happen to be born in. And when you feel like, and I don't, I don't deserve all this stuff, then you've got a lot more generosity. So things that we don't control is where we were, location where we were born, uh, who we were born to, access to healthcare and these educational opportunities and career opportunities. These are things that, you know, some of, some of us just had really good opportunities with and others of us didn't. And a lot of these GU trips that you guys will go on and we get to go experience people that didn't get the same opportunities that we had. Uh, and even within America, right, there's totally different people from different backgrounds and different races that have different experiences. And, you know, if somebody's, is entitled feeling feeling like, and I deserve these things. Uh, it's just a, a heart posture that needs to change so that you can experience more generosity. Um, okay, let me see. All right, let me open up to you guys real quick. Any other thoughts you guys have on entitlement? Have you seen that play out in 
your lives or in giving in general. Nope. All right, so then the, the last piece we'll go into is if we give, then they will become entitled. And so this idea that, hey, if, if we give this dude on the corner a dollar, then he's going to keep begging on the corner and he's going to want to have more and more money. Do you think that is the, the what is your thought on that, that idea where uh, I'm not going to give to somebody because I don't want them to rely on this money? I think you're talking, but for some reason it's still muted. At least I can't hear. Can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you now. Um, this this reminds me of the Poverty Inc. documentary that we watched uh, with Haiti and um how giving can be can actually be uh, destructive to communities and it can make them become reliant on your giving um so i think of the in the haiti documentary you talked about um there's a lot of businesses that would make and sell clothes and that would um lead the community and those people that start started the businesses to uh build better lives for themselves and so when we gave a bunch of clothes for free um it kind of destroyed those businesses and caused the people in haiti to become reliant kind of on those on those clothes um and so that that man that just stands out a lot like we got to be informed on what is our giving um leading to in the future and not just the present um what's what's the long-term benefit of it you know that's huge you know, absolutely true. I totally agree. Tom's shoes is similar as, you know, this idea that we loved is we buy a pair and we give a pair, but then the shoemakers and shoe distributors and uh, in the countries that they were given the Tom's shoes to didn't, uh, you know, all lost their jobs and all that kind of stuff. And so, yeah, I think that's where informed giving really is really important. All right. So, well, End the entitlement section with what if what if everyone in the world was selfish what if everyone in the world was generous which world would you want to live in uh, how do we begin to create a better world so i'm going to actually open up that last question as as i think our last question of the night uh, how do we begin to create this better world Uh, by leading by example, um, we, we can hope for that other people will, um, go out there and, and, you know, do it. But I think everybody in this class, if they could just go out there and, um, lead by their example and then hopefully lead others to do the same, that's, that's, uh, you know, hope for, for betterment in the world. Uh, absolutely be the change you want to see in the world i think that's so applicable in in generosity as well um and i think this was brian mentioned this like you you uh give a man a fish you feed him for a day you teach him how to fish you feed him for a lifetime and so that's something else with with generosity thinking about how do we teach people how to fish versus just give them a fish and so you can do that with your generosity of I want, I want to give towards things that do education or do training or vocational training instead of uh, just giving out handouts or something to be able to uh, help them to put themselves on their own, on their feet. Okay, and then uh, there are good genuine reasons you should and can practice regular generosity. Absolutely. So then what I want to end with is just one challenge for you guys for this week, and then I'll turn it over to Dan if you got homework. So um, I would love for you guys to commit to doing something nice for somebody else with no ex ex expectation with anything in return. And this has to be a little bit outside your comfort zone is my hope. So it's not like to your sister or to your mom. 
that it's like very comfortable doing something nice for them. But like I, my hope is a stranger or somebody you don't really talk to normally at work or at school. And just, and it doesn't have to be with money. It could be with time or with talent or with treasure, whatever, but try to do something nice. And it can be very small uh, for somebody else with nothing in return, or even have them not even know you did it. And it was just kind of an anonymous thing. Uh, I would love for you guys to try that. By a show of hands, is anyone willing to take that challenge with me this coming week? Sweet, sweet. Awesome. All right. Hopefully that goes really well. And Daniel, I'll, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you guys so much. Thank okay. you, Jeff. Thanks so much, Jeff. Kim, uh, why don't you give us the last word here on our homework and stuff? I think Kim's still here. There I am. Go. Yeah, thank you. So in addition to Jeff's challenge, which is a great one, I love that. This week, we're going to ask you to start looking up the organizations that you potentially want to propose for your grant proposal. So that means looking up an organization that's local to you. And I'll cover this in the email, but local to you is something within 100 miles of where you live. And it's an organization that is working to address the issues or help the people that you've identified that is in line with your passion. So you're gonna look those up on GuideStar, access their 990s and fill out the 990 analysis for those organizations. And I'm asking you to do two because a lot of times your first one won't qualify like the one you're most interested in. So it's good to have a backup. Um, so you'll be working on that this week and submitting those by, by next weekend because then that's really how you get started for your presentations. We start presentations in two weeks. So the more work you do now, the better prepared you will be. So be sure to check the schedule for presentations. Make sure you know when you are assigned to present. And if you have any questions or concerns or you're a little not unsure with the 990s, you're not finding your organization or anything else, feel free to reach out with an email. Um, the Poverty Inc. is due February 10th. So that's your deadline for that assignment. However, our next class is on the issue of poverty. So I really encourage you to take the time this week to watch that documentary. Go ahead and get that assignment out of the way. 